what one team does Nico Ia Maleava have to beat this season for the 2024 campaign to be considered a success? Caleb Calhoun, what do you say, sir? Well, I said that Nico has to beat everybody but Georgia for this year to be a success. However, if I'm picking a team, I think the standard bear is going to be Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma will give us a very good read into what will happen the rest of the season because I think Oklahoma is probably the toughest game outside of Georgia for Tennessee this year. I don't see how they lose to Florida at home. I think they should beat Alabama at home. I And and, and NC State at a neutral site is, I think, a should a, a, a one they should win too. So I'm circling Oklahoma. Tennessee must beat Oklahoma for Nico to meet my expectations, which are pretty high, I will admit, because I think that we are seeing a – Marriage on the level of Tim Tebow, Urban Meyer, J.D. Warfel, Steve Spurrier, and Tommy Frazier, Tom Osborne with Nico Yamaliyama and Josh Heifel. No, yours are very high. Your standards are very high. The question brought to you by the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with two Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with two Ts.com. High standards can be alleviated. Use the promo code HOOK for 10% off. The promo code hook for 10% off. Did you see what I did there, Caleb? Saw what you did. Saw what you did. Yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. So um as 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 far as exactly what you're saying, he that your standards are high. Mine are high as well. But the team that Tennessee has to beat, where is the Oklahoma game? That Oklahoma game is at Oklahoma. Okay. So I could see them losing that game. That's a loud, raucous environment in a football team that I think if their chemistry is all right with their NIL spending, they're going to be pretty good, more like last year than two years ago. But I don't think they're going to be as good as last year. So I could see losing that one and still having a successful season. To me, this kind of feels like Peyton Manning. It's the opportunity to take over Alabama and play the song, We Own Alabama, like Sweet Home Alabama, that they did. So to me, it's Alabama. You have an opportunity to start some sort of streak in a very streaky series. If if they do everything else, they beat Alabama and not Oklahoma, everything else that I think they would do, I would call that a successful season. You would not? No, I would not. My expectations okay. are too high, and not only because of Nico. I have told you guys this for a while now, and this is very clear. Tennessee, okay, one of the biggest reasons Tennessee was successful in 2022, Dave, was not just was not their level of talent. That was a big part, Josh Heupel, Hinden Hooker, but they had so many people back from 2021 that they were one of the most experienced teams in the SEC that year. And so we were and we thought that was a little bit of a joke at the time, but it turned out to be fortuitous. Exactly. And I mean, you watched. Hendon Hooker and Jalen Hyatt had a rapport because they had played together for two years at that point. And him, he and Cedric Tillman had a rapport and he and Ramel Keaton had a rapport. And so there's no reason for that rapport not to be there this year, even though Nico was the backup last year, because he's worked with all of these receivers that are coming back. The offensive line has an amazing rapport. And this is the thing about NIL and the era of NIL in the transfer portal. And I keep insisting this experience we're in a renaissance of experience mattering again in college football. Dave, you remember like the eighties and the, even into the nineties when you'd say, well, this team's got 18 seniors on the team and they're going to go win a national title because of that. And we kind of laughed that all yes. for a long time in the two thousands. That's kind of back like that, that, that thought process has kind of returned because so many people are coming back to college and leaving year in and year out via the transfer portal where well, that is a bigger factor now than it used to be in Tennessee is a very experienced team this year. I, I The SP Plus projections, I remember looking at them a couple of months ago. I haven't pulled them back up, but among teams that are top 25 in talent, Tennessee's one of the only few that's not outside of the top 50 in returning talent and returning experience. And so, I mean, guys, the combination of experience and talent matters, and Nico has that surrounding him. That's why they should be really good this year. Southside Brewers said, if we make it deep into the playoff, it will be a success. And if that happens, does it matter if we beat Oklahoma? It's a very good point. And I know it's going to get Caleb started, but we're both kind of wrong. 
It's not Alabama. It's not Oklahoma. It's win a playoff game. Caleb, brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, the Tennessee tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com. RickTerryJewelry.com. Let's face it. They could lose to Alabama and Oklahoma and go into the college football playoff, win a game. That's a successful season. Southside Brewer, you super triggered me right there. I oh, need some of the beers that I you're was... offering me. Yes. Um, but I will. Of, we need IPA to bring. I mean, an IPA high, what ABR, whatever it's called, to bring Caleb down because he gets fired up when you talk about the regular season. That's crazy. Hey now, you just you validated. Go. Dave inadvertently just validated that I was right I over him. I almost, I almost didn't read the comment because when I saw it, I said, you know what Caleb's going to do? He's going to. That's crazy. The rest of this segment. Because this is the problem <laughs> with the expanded playoff. This is what's driving me crazy about it. This was never a thing in college football back in the past. And this was why college football was the best sport in America. You circled the games in the regular season that mattered. You circled Alabama. You circled Oklahoma. You circled Florida. You circled Georgia. Now, because of the stupid expanded playoff, people are going to say, those, day, those games don't matter. This is about what we do in the playoff in December. Thanks, college football. Thanks, everybody who wanted the expanded playoff. Southside Brewer just proved why I was right. Because in no other year in history, Dave, would someone have ever said, it's not a big deal if we don't beat Alabama if they were a Tennessee fan. And now we're saying that because of the stupid expanded playoff. Well, I think he said Oklahoma. You're, your that would have been a circle still, game. No, but wait, your rivals are still your rivals. It's not, it's, this is why you and I disagreed so much on flopping purposefully against Kentucky. And I still will argue this part with you for the rest of my life. Now, the SEC tournament... I'm giving up on that, okay? You won. You got me. All right. But Kentucky's still a rival in basketball. Alabama's still a rival in football. Oklahoma's not a rival. It may one day be. But to me, you should still get up for your rivals. I understand it's a business, but there is a certain bit of something that goes into that. Don't don't completely dismiss that. But, Dave, first of all, let's call it what it does. Tennessee was ahead of the curve on this before anybody in the SEC. You know this in the 80s, Dave, right? Doug Dickey went out of his way to schedule every tough uh, – he would try to get one marquee non-conference game a year, right? Yes. Before all of this happened. Now, Oklahoma is not a non-conference game. They're an SEC game. I get it, guys. But it's still a uniquely marquee game. Yes, there were your rivals, but you always circled that uniquely marquee game also as a Tennessee fan every year. That's Oklahoma this year. And maybe I circled it different from you. When Tennessee would play UCLA in the Rose Bowl way back in the 90s when I was a young guy and I was still a fan, I, I looked at those games as it'd be nice to win those, but the SEC is what matters. You circled those as must wins? I think you always did. Yes. I, I remember no. um, 2000, date, 2003. I was did a fan you cir circle Pitt as a must win in 2022? Well, I mean, I did because I knew the season would be derailed if they didn't beat Pitt. So not like, so, but let's go back to 2003, Miami. You don't think, I was a Tennessee fan at the time. Uh, you don't, everybody circled that Miami game. Everybody did. The one in South okay, Beach. Night Striker says, Caleb, that's not the problem with the expanded playoff. That's a problem with the emphasis on national championships. Yeah, you circled games, but you also had your season end in September with a Florida loss. That is true. Okay, I got to come back for that easily. The extra emphasis, when you expand a playoff, that naturally creates the extra emphasis on the national championship, Dave. The meaning, the phrase meaningless bowl game didn't start until the playoff came. Christian McCaffrey doesn't do what he did if it's pre-college football playoff era because bowls Which still matter. Those that don't know, he was one of the first most prominent that sat out. There was another one that year as well. I can't remember who it was, but. Yeah. That, that whole phrase, meaningless bowl game, is a result of the college football playoff. And the more you expand the playoff, the more it's going to suck. Will you at least give me this, Dave? The bigger the playoff, the more the national championship is going to suck the air out of every other aspect of college football. Is that fair to say? That the play, I, No, I don't think that's fair to say. I don't think a 14-team playoff sucks the air out of college football. I think if you go bigger no, I don't, than that. I, I mean, it sucks the air out of all the other storylines in college football. A Citrus Bowl win, for instance. A, oh, a more expanded yeah. playoff devalues December, the January, win. December, January, yes. I wonder what the Bulls will do. 
By the way, me drinker brings up a great point. Are we t- so 12 this year, right? Supposed to be 14 next year, or is that even been uh, decided? This reminds me of the next- middle of the does it remind you? Do you remember the middle of the year when the NBA said the first round of the playoffs is going to be five and seven, five instead of seven games, or vice versa? Just like at the All Star break, they said that. You're like, do you not have some sort of plan going on here? Is it going to be 14, 16, 38 next year? I don't know. Do we know for sure? Uh, it's supposed to go to 14 by 2027, 12 for 2025, and 20, 2024 and 2025. Excuse me. 12 for 2024, 2025, 14 is all but a done deal for 2026, but not official. That's as far as I go, but they keep, you know, changing things. And so we're going to see what happens, but look, I'm all right to get back to my point. You guys got me. You guys got me. There's no circled game that Nico has to win this year, because if he goes to the playoff, it's good. You know, he can go eight and four and back into the playoff and then go win a national title. And he's going to be the greatest quarterback in Tennessee history because the work he did in the regular season, if it's good or not, is not there because of the stupid expanded TV show you guys wanted in December. It's a pretty good TV show, though. Not a I'm, bad TV show. I, I, I it's not a, a no. I what did being a little bit hard on the TV show? What did you say? What about the three month long TV show? This is like this is like okay. Have you guys ever watched a TV series where they pack all the good stuff into the last three episodes, but you had to watch like a long season of nothing happening until then? That's what they just turned college football into. And congratulations, you got your precious playoff. Um, celebrate. My precious playoff. I'm very excited for my precious playoff. <laughs> <laughs>